Question. What's the difference between being hired and being fired? Answer. If you're Ronna McDaniel, about four days. In a move that has stunned the political world and is still having reverberations throughout the news media, former RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel was fired from NBC News in a spot that she had obtained not more than four days earlier. What happened? Why was she removed? And what does this mean for NBC News going forward? Hang on, folks. We're going to get into all this in just one second. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative. Step on up to my electronic front porch and let's talk. Hi folks, Brian Trippett here, the Front Porch Conservative, and I was wondering if I could ask for your help. My channel is getting very close to 1,000 subscribers, so if you wouldn't mind, please do me a favor. At some point during this video, but definitely before it ends, please do me a favor and give me a sub. That would be a huge help to me in what I'm trying to do. And now, on to the video. A move that is still reverberating around the journalistic world and definitely making talk in political circles, former RNC chairwoman Ronna McDaniel was dismissed by NBC News not more than four days after she had obtained a position as a paid commentator for the network. So let's take a look at what happened, see if we can give the background, and I definitely have more than a few thoughts about this. So we'll start with The Hollywood Reporter. Headline, NBC News ousts Ronna McDaniel after staff uproar, CAA drops ex-RNC chair. The former Republican National Committee chair was hired as a contributor by NBC News on Friday. Article written by Alex Weprin and Kim Masters, we have the following. NBC News has officially decided to part ways with its newest on-air contributor, Ronna McDaniel, the former Republican National Committee chair, just days after she was hired. Quote, After listening to the legitimate concerns of many of you, I have decided that Ronna McDaniel will not be an NBC contributor, NBC News Group Chairman Cesar Conde wrote in a memo to staff Tuesday afternoon. No organization, particularly a newsroom, can succeed unless it's cohesive and aligned. Over the last few days, it has become clear that this appointment undermines that goal. Separately, McDonald, excuse me, McDaniel has been dropped by CAA, the agency that repped her in the deal with the network, sources confirmed to The Hollywood Reporter. The former RNC chair was hired by NBC News on March 22nd as an on-air contributor, and she made her NBC debut on Sunday's edition of Meet the Press, where she was grilled by Kristen Welker. Quote, It couldn't be a more important moment to have a voice like Rana's on the team. NBC News Senior VP of Political Carrie Budoff brown said of her hire at the time. But the move was extremely controversial within NBC News, with former Meet the Press moderator Chuck Todd voicing his concerns on Sunday's show just minutes after the interview ran. Quote, Look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this, because many of, my, of, of our professional dealings with the RNC over the past six years have been met with gaslighting, have been met with character assassination, Todd said on the program. Those public concerns continued Monday with one MSNBC host after another calling for executives to reconsider the move, including Joy Reid, Nicole Wallace, and Lawrence O'Donnell. Quote, to be clear, we believe NBC News should seek out conservative Republican voices to provide balance in their election coverage, Morning Joe co-host Mika Brzezinski said. But it should be conservative Republicans, not a person who used position of power to be an anti-democracy election denier, and we hope NBC will reconsider its decision, it goes without saying that she will not be a guest on Morning Joe in her capacity as a paid contributor. And MSNBC's biggest primetime star, Rachel Maddow, delivered an extended monologue about the history of American fascism, connecting the echoes of the past to the current efforts to undermine elections and noting McDaniel's role in the 2020 effort. Quote, I mean, you wouldn't hire a wise guy. You wouldn't hire a made man like a mobster to work at the DA's office, right? Maddow said. 
You wouldn't hire a pickpocket to work as a TSA screener, so I find the decision to put her on the payroll. It's inexplicable, and I hope they will reverse their decision. Okay, let's get into this. For the record, up front, I thought Ronna McDaniel was a terrible chairwoman for the RNC. She raised very little money, had very few legislative successes, or I should say election successes, raised very little money. The money that she did raise was often misused. For example, she told people that they were raising money in 2020 to help out in the efforts to question the election results and see what could be done about it. Instead, those monies were diverted to two Senate seats in Georgia, which they lost. What money she did raise when she wasn't doing that she was lavishly spending it on herself and paid members of the RNC staff and not really applying it where it needed to go in terms of winning elections. So on the whole, I have little to no use for Ronna McDaniel politically. That said, however, NBC News made the decision to hire her as a on-air contributor, giving her opinion from a conservative perspective, a Republican perspective. Now, how conservative and how Republican? Yeah, it's debatable, but that was NBC's goal in the whole thing. So Ronna was fired on, excuse me, hired on a Friday, had one appearance as an on-air contributor, which was Sunday's Meet the Press. She was interviewed by Kristen Welker, and Welker put her through the fire. And Ronna McDaniel gave takes that made both conservative Republicans and probably moderates and liberals happy or unhappy, depending upon the answer she was giving. I'll give you a couple of examples. Here's a clip where Ronna McDaniel is asked a specific question by Kristen Welker, and I'll let you hear it for yourself. Folks, check this out. Very quickly, Ronna, before I let you go, you seem to be changing your tone as it relates to Joe Biden being legitimately elected. Why should viewers, why should people trust you believe what you're saying? Right I don't now? think I'm changing my tone at all. But why should people trust what you're saying right now? One, I will say this, Kristen Voters right now in this country are going to be making a choice in November, and they don't care about 2020. Republicans a lot of and Democrats do. A lot of people say it is fundamental to the country's democracy. I think they're thinking about inflation, the border, crime, their kids schooling. Okay, that's just one example. Now I'll give you another one, and this is the one that probably drove conservatives, uh, or a lot of them anyway, the most crazy. Take a listen to how she responds to the question of, was Joe Biden legitimately elected? So you didn't say he won it fair at that point. Can you say as you sit here today, did Joe Biden win the election fair and square? He won. He's the legitimate did he win president. Fair and, square? fair and square he won. It's certified. It's done. But I, I Ronna, do why think, Kristen, I, you let me just say something. To say that. Why because has it taken you until now to be able to say I'm going to push back a little because I do think it's fair to say there were problems in 2020. And to say that does not mean he's not the legitimate but Ronna, president. when you say that, it. Okay. So you begin to see what I say about. McDaniel had a little something for everybody, regardless of whether you liked her, didn't like her, liked her efforts as the chairwoman, didn't like them as the chairwoman, liked her in terms of how she supported Trump, didn't like how she supported Trump, what have you. Now, for my part, the clips that I have seen of this interview, I thought, on the whole, Ronna McDaniel was pretty bland. Now, there's probably some things in there that are spicy enough to make everybody's blood pressure go up, but let's lay that aside for a moment. Remember, she's hired to be a Republican conservative voice in the coverage of the election going forward, and her contract was for at least two years. Well, the trouble for Ronna starts shortly after her interview. Let's just get right down to it. F. Chuck Todd, the former host of Meet the Press, comes out and they're having a round table. And it's his comments that really start the ball rolling. Folks, I want you to listen to this because to me, this is extraordinary. Let me deal with the elephant in the room. Yeah. I think our bosses owe you an apology for putting you in this situation because I don't know what to believe. She is now a paid contributor by NBC News. Well, I have no idea whether any answer she gave to you was because she didn't want to mess up her contract. Mm. Oh, like nobody at NBC News has ever had that consideration before. But we continue. Um, she wants us to believe that she was speaking for the RNC when the RNC was paying for it. So she has 
she has credibility issues that she still has to deal with. Yeah. Is she speaking for herself or is she speaking on behalf of who's paying her? Once at the RNC, she did say that, hey, I'm speaking for the party. I get that, that's part of the job. So what about here? I, I will say this, I think your interview uh, did a good job of exposing, I think, many of the contradictions. And look, there's a reason why there's a lot of journalists at NBC News uncomfortable with this because many of our professional dealings with the RNC over the last six years have been met with gaslighting, mm. have been met with character assassination. So it is, it, you know, that's where you begin here. And so um, when NBC made the decision to give her NBC News's credibility. <laughs> I'm sorry, NBC credibility. You gotta ask yourself, what does she bring NBC News? Okay, uh, that's it, that's it. I'm ready to tee off on this thing right now, I've had enough. Okay, let's just get right down to it. Ronna McDaniel was not dismissed from NBC News because she violated the morals clause of her contract. She wasn't dismissed because she did something so untoward that the network was like, okay, we got to get this woman off the payroll. And I mean, right now, she didn't do anything other than give one interview, which maybe lasted, who knows, 15, 20 minutes at the most. Okay. What this gets down to is Ronna McDaniel got fired because of what she believes and who she was associated with, Donald Trump. Now, you can say that's good, bad, whatever about her associations with Donald Trump, but she was the chairwoman of the RNC. Of course, she's going to be associated with Donald Trump. Now, with regard to certain members of the NBC News journalistic community, I have some comments, and I am going to be very pointed about this. So if you don't like spice, you might want to turn the volume down right now. This first one is for F. Chuck Todd, the former host of Meet the Depressed. I emphasize the words former. Okay, Chuck, what you just did was so unprofessional, you ought to be fired yourself. First of all, you are the former host of Meet the Press, which means you don't get to dictate the terms of who is and is not brought on the show, or for that matter, any other show on NBC News. Okay, you are paid staff. Let me say that again. You are paid staff. Okay, Carrie Budoff Brown and Cesar Conde are the ones who make the decisions about who comes on the network, who's hired, and who's fired. All right, your qualms about your colleague don't really matter. And next, what in the world kind of unprofessionalism is it of you to be white knighting on behalf of Kristen Welker? Believe me, the lady can quite well take care of herself. What you did there was the total height, lack of professionalism. And frankly, you ought to be reprimanded for what you did. If you want to question somebody, fine, do it off the air. You want to talk about the decision of NBC executives, fine, do it off the air. But where I come from, you don't air your dirty laundry, and you just went on national television. Not only did you crap on a colleague who was just hired three days earlier, you crapped on network executives, you crapped on everybody else at NBC News, and frankly, from my perspective, you made an ass out of yourself. No wonder the late Rush Limbaugh used to refer to you as Upchuck Todd. Now, let's move on. As far as everybody else at NBC News, um, Joy Reid, Mika Brzezinski, Joe Scarborough, Joy Reid, Lawrence O'Donnell, same thing. You guys are paid staff. You may not like Ronna McDaniel personally. Fine, that's your choice. You may not agree with her political beliefs. Fine, that's your choice. But she is your colleague. You at least owe her the decency of respecting her. You may not agree with her opinions. Fine, but at least give her the decency of saying, hey, She's a colleague, may not agree with her on everything, but you know what? I'll, re I'll listen to what she has to say. I'll respect her. We'll get along amicably. Instead, you guys circled the wagons and made it a point to bitch, piss, and moan to executives at NBC News and get Ronna McDaniel out not more than 96 hours after she's hired. Unbelievable, which goes to something else. 
I don't want to hear anybody at NBC News ever again lecture me or anybody else on the right side of the political spectrum about open-mindedness, tolerance, understanding, willing to accept diverse opinions. You have just been laid bare in your hypocrisy. The entire world can now see you for what you are. Not that they didn't already realize what you were, which is a bunch of partisan hacks, but now you've left it no doubt at all for anybody. You have completely shown God and the world you don't care about open-mindedness. You don't care about tolerance. You don't care about anything else. You just care about your ideological purity and making sure it's preserved. Oh, yeah, you've got some token Republicans on staff. One guy who used to work for Pence, one guy used to work for Paul Ryan. But really, are they conservatives or are they just, you know, progressive light? I would argue they're progressive light. Now, Lest you guys over at NBC News sit there, see this video and say, well, how did you have us act? I'll give you a perfect example of how you should be acting. And the irony of it is the example I'm going to show you comes from your not too distant past on your network. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you back to election night 2002. The NBC decision desk was anchored by the legendary Tom Brokaw and by Tim Russert, the former host of Meet the Press, and I would argue the best host that show ever had. They invited, of all people, to come on Rush Limbaugh. And I want to give you a little bit of a flavor for how that exchange went. So folks, do me a favor, check this out. You're going to find this to be really interesting. Keep in mind, this was not more than 22 years ago. Uh, joining us now is Rush Limbaugh. We're pleased to have you with us tonight. Thank Rush, you. Uh, we were saying earlier tonight it looked like a Republican breeze. It's now become a warm gale pushing the uh, Republicans uh, into office and the Democrats out. It is. It is. But don't forget now, there are a lot of situations where uh, in Minnesota there's a possible lawsuit waiting with the absentee ballots, disenfranchised, and how close it is. Missouri, it's 22,000 votes last time I looked. Uh, any number of things. Democrats don't give up. You know, they don't give up easily. Last and, time I checked, Republicans didn't need it. Yeah, well, they, 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 <laughs> you know, I heard I heard something earlier tonight. I was I've been watching you guys uh, uh, backstage and you I, I saw Carville, too, uh, hiding behind a trash can when I said uh, and I, he, he was upset because the Democrats ran a Me Too campaign. I would like to respectfully disagree with that. I think this Me Too campaign was a piggyback effort at the last minute. But all year, last two years actually since george bush was elected they said he was an illegitimate president they said florida is payback time we there's a lot of anger down there and terry mcauliffe staked his personal reputation on it i think you know it's kind of funny that clip is from 22 years ago but a lot of the same themes seem to be being talked about these days illegitimate president all kinds of different stuff but you get a really good flavor for what happened now, Rush Limbaugh was only on the air for about five minutes, and throughout the night, they brought him back for a couple of comments about certain things that were happening, certain races around the country, or perhaps a statement about themes. But you notice something that went on between Limbaugh, Tom Brokaw, and Tim Russert. Those three men probably didn't agree on much of anything, but they were respectful, they were cordial. Yeah, Tom Brokaw took a good-natured shot at Limbaugh. Limbaugh just sort of laughed it off and went on. But they got along with each other despite their differences politically and ideologically. As a matter of fact, Limbaugh tells a story that Tim Russert always told him, hey, if you ever want to talk about something, you call me up. I'll have you on Meet the Press any Sunday you want to come on here. Could you ever see that sort of thing happening today? Not so much. Now, some closing thoughts. I've got a message for Cesar Conde and Carrie Budoff Brown. If you think that you're in charge of NBC News, forget it. You have just relinquished any executive authority that you have as far as making decisions about the network news. The proof of that is the fact that you let the staff tell you who should be fired and who should be hired. Oh, no, they may not have walked into your office and done something drastic, but you caved to their pressure. Basically, you guys now have a CNN problem. And in case you're wondering what I'm referring to, try this on for size. This is from Politico a while back. This tells the story of the firing of Chris Leitch. Now, if that name sounds familiar, he was the chief of news operations over at CNN. 
And due to Donald Trump's appearance in a town hall, the staff, Anderson Cooper, Jake Tapper, everybody else, used that as the last straw to get him removed. They didn't like him to begin with. They just found one last good reason to get him out. So now you guys are about as screwed as he was. Your time on the clock is just ticking. You, it hasn't happened yet, but don't worry. The staff, the inmates at the NBC asylum will make sure that you're removed as soon as possible. So what's the upshot of all this? Well, I got some more bad news for NBC. Not only do the inmates run the asylum, but the inmates are about to cost you guys a whole lot of money. This is an article from Politico that came out today. McDaniel eyes big payout after NBC drama. Article written by Rachel Bade. Will it be at the $600,000 interview? The ramifications of NBC's decision yesterday to part ways with former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel just two days after her paid network debut on Meet the Press are just starting to shake out and they could be expensive. McDaniel expects to be fully paid out of her contract two years at $300,000 annually since she did not breach its terms according to a person close to McDaniel. That means that her single, not-quite-so-20-minute interview Sunday could cost NBC more than $30,000 per minute or $500 per second. That might be just the beginning of the fallout following yesterday's announcement from NBC Universal News Group Chair Cesar Conde that the deal first announced on Friday would be canceled. McDaniel has spoken with Brian Friedman, renowned lawyer to the estranged cable news stars, to discuss legal options even beyond recouping the dollar value of her contract. Oh my God. NBC, you have royally screwed up on so many levels. And you know what? As a general rule of thumb, I don't like seeing us become more and more of a litigious society. But in this case, if Ronna McDaniels takes NBC News to the cleaners in court, I will jump for joy over it. Like I said, I don't necessarily care for Ronna McDaniels politically, but in this case, she'd be wholly justified. Yeah, so Ronna, go on, take him to court, and I'll be here laughing the whole way on your behalf. But that's what I think about it all. What do you think? As we start to wrap up this video, please do me some favors as always. Number one, if you're not a subscriber to my channel, please do so. Number two, please hit the bell for notifications. I want to make sure you're always aware when new material is coming out, be it a video or a live stream. Number three, leave a comment below. Number four, share the video around. And finally, give me a thumbs up. My name is Brian Trippett. I am your front porch conservative, and I will see you next time.